الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين. This is Majib Kazi and you're watching uh, Voice of Kashmir from the study of Washington Roundtable. Uh, I am very humble and thrilled to have a very special guest with me today, who is a senior human rights activist from Washington D.C. Has dedicated his life towards uh, voicing for the human rights violation that are taking place uh, anywhere in the world, particularly in the South Asia. I am joined by none other than Shahab Karni sir. Karni sir, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kazi sir. Thank Bye. you very much, and uh, really appreciate for taking the time out. And uh, the issue that I have in my hand today, and I have chosen this one to be because of the uh, circumstances that are surrounding us. Uh, I I would like to take your take on the situation in Kashmir. Do you think that Kashmir has already been divided? Very good. Valid question, Kazi Saab, and we are going to keep this segment in English for reasons so that our friends in Washington DC circle can hear us out and understand also the dilemma that the Kashmir is going through. Let me take you back to the Trump administration. So what happened in this? I, I, I use the term transaction, Kashmir transaction. Let's use the term for, for, for hypothetical reasons. Hmm. Trump doctrine or Trump modus operandi was not as the state dictates the protocols of diplomacy. It was all personal. It was all Trump incorporated oriented diplomacy included his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. So when it comes to Kashmir, there was a thought process between uh, among the family that they're going to be there for at least eight years in the White House and Trump is going to win the elections. So whatever they did to serve their personal and commercial interests in transactions, Kashmir became the victim of it. Now you're going to ask me whether I'm creating uh, like a 007 movie script here. No, let me validate my statement by, by quoting you a couple of scenarios and reconnect the dots here. At the same time, Jared Kushner, after Trump family visited Saudi Arabia with all the sword dancing and uh, the uh, first daughter-in-law sitting among the Saudis, only woman, lady, even from America delegation or Saudi delegation. Only so Trump was selling whatever the Arabs were buying into. Woman factor, transactional factor, Khashoggi factor to MBS. So MBS become a partner with Jared Kushner and Trump for commercial reasons. Why? Because at the same time, Saudi Arabia announced a $60 billion oil refinery in, uh, initiative in Kashmir with Reliance Group you know, of India. So this was all personal. Same time with Imran Khan and Zulfi Bukhari, look at all the pictures. Personal transactions with Jared Kushner about the assets in New York. I'm not going to go into detail. So this was not a state diplomacy. No State Department official were involved in all these transactional conversations. It was all son-in-law and daughter and mastermind, former President Trump. So Kashmir became a victim of this hatching, I will say commercial or business transaction. Yes, Mujib Kazi sir. Harni sir, uh, I mean, that is a very unique and a different analysis that I have never uh, uh, actually thought on those lines that Kashmir issue, you know, uh, an issue that we, we grew up uh, facing these challenges that uh, there is a 84,000 square miles area which has a 2.24 million people, human being living in it. And, and you're telling me today that it was a personal transaction. I mean, Kashmir is, do you think that it was a commodity that was sold to to third party? I mean, how can it be a transaction? I, I'm puzzled. I'm making a great acquisition here. And through your television network, I think you should be welcoming the other side of the story. I already named the Trump family. Now I'm going to name Imran Khan, Zulfi Bukhari and company mm. for furthering their power base in Pakistan. They did enter into all these shady kind of conversation without even involving our meaning the Pakistani foreign uh, office into that. You know, how many times you have seen in those conversation diplomats taking part, you know, where were our foreign office? Where are our, our diplomats? All the transaction was to consolidate 
their own power base one now the the other stakeholder was our chief of staff you know he just wanted to strengthen and he's still doing the same thing to strengthen his power base so this was all personal nothing to do with the state diplomacy any protocol any norms either from united states of america we call it state department or whether our islamabad based foreign ministry or diplomats minus no really no involvement no engagement so no what engagement you even from the national security councils from either country hmm. so so what what you're saying what i hear you saying is that uh, the abrahamic accord and you know whatever happened in middle east so the, it wasn't uh, uh, in line with the state department of united states or from islamabad it was purely a bilateral transaction what is it i mean this was all done to have the middle eastern markets captured for the trump holding company wow same is the case with india so the where do you market. where do you see the abrahamic accord fits in in this whole equation what you are saying if that is correct well what happened now i mean to further the abraham where is that movement now i mean look at saudi arabia and the relationship with biden administration it's all cold look at turkey you know they had to reverse the course with the biden administration for since january biden never made a single call to imran khan so what why does do that tell you why do you think that is the case what does that tell you because they are negating the script the script written by the trump family and uh, state department or the diplomats in america were not part of that so trump, biden administration is trying to fix that you know so that is part you know biden not calling imran khan is reversal of the path that the son in law doctrine took place in america so the the effort by the international community and uh, i mean obviously Uh, when we have a foreign secretary of state visits the uh, afghanistan pakistan and india and trying to come with the negotiation withdrawal of the forces from afghanistan and all of that will be reversed what you're saying the, uh, the the diplomacy of the united states is taking a u turn based on the number of terms each uh, party is elected at the office or who would be leading the washington dc uh, so is that what you're telling us that the the so, there would not be a consistency of a policy mujib qazi mujib qazi sahab we can have a conversation based on logic and whatever we see okay whenever the us whoever the stakeholder whether is the secretary of foreign or national security machine they are negotiating and having conversation with army chief of staff in pakistan mm. they are not negotiating or having conversation with imran khan administration so isn't is there any answer so let, let me let me take you to the situation that is being developed on grounds uh, recently prime minister of india modi invited a hand picked politician from indian occupied kashmir who uh, up until last month were uh, considering that you know they were not being treated as an equal citizen of india uh, they have always served the interest of of india and now they were uh, pretty much house arrest or in the jail for the last almost two years now the two the second anniversary of august 5th is approaching and right a month before that he invites those uh, 14 people and and asks them to present a demand exactly the same demand that uh, modi would have expected or would have undertaken otherwise how do you see that and how do you see that linkage between this uh, developing story as well as abrahamic uh, accord and what you are saying that uh, pakistani foreign office is being left out and then the relationship is only being negotiated between coas the chief of army staff let me connect you on the dots here this past friday today is what today is when we are recording this today is wednesday uh last friday there was abdullah abdullah and ashraf ghani was it they were in white house for two days active engagement conversation with biden administration on afghanistan taliban stakeholder they were staying in willard in washington dc if you are familiar with that all hosted by the us government not a single representation from either pakistani civilian administration or the pindi boys 
which we are called chief of staff you just mentioned. This is Afghan situation. Now mm. coming back to Kashmir situation and Modi meeting all the stakeholders, so-called stakeholder, which, you know, I mean, this is going to be a very harsh reality. Most of them are sell out anyway. They go where the big bucks are. Those, those Kashmiri leadership, you know, so-called, you know, for last almost 70 years, third, third generation of those leadership are fake and they go for the highest bidder. So nothing concrete is going to come out of that, uh, I will say, um, entertainment, lunches and dinners because the Indian indigenous Kashmiris are not at the, at the table for negotiation. So, so these, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. So August 5th is coming and you will see the Kashmiri diaspora probably protesting in Washington, New York and other parts of the world. And you will see maybe conferences being held, press releases being released and, you know, Kashmiri diaspora making the cry out. So so what do you think will that have an impact at the Washington if they are uh, completely unmoved? Well, understand, please, the Washington machine, whether we are talking about the State Department, or White House national security, or the intelligence machines, you know, NSA and CIA and everything. They are not stupid, Kazi sahab. I mean, they know the ground realities more than what we know. So they know the Kashmiri diaspora is so-called divided. I mean, where the people from Kashmir, so-called Azad Kashmir, look at the elections, you know, which are being held in Azad Kashmir. Do you think this Azad Kashmir is Azad? Come on. I mean, PTI or whoever government is in Islamabad, they try to overcome all the political parties or machines in Azad Kashmir. So this is not Azad. So whatever you see the activity in Washington, D.C. or in Belgium or in London by the Kashmiri activist, you need to define and conclude who are those indigenous activists or they really mean business or they're just proxies for certain interests. Who, whoever is paying for their biryani and korma in Washington, D.C. Well, I, I don't want to be harsh, but those are the facts. I've been here for 32 plus years in Washington. This is what I say. Whoever pays for their transportation, korma, biryani, those activists play the game in Washington, D.C. Well, I, it is a sad reality and I would have to leave it right there because I am extremely puzzled by the analysis that you have presented. And the very reason is that you know, when we were growing up, we heard this notion that Kashmir was sold for some pennies per human being at back in the days about 200 years ago. And we are back in the same situation right now that Kashmir is being treated as a transaction, not a legitimate demand by the people of Kashmir who are suffering. And you can see, you know, over, over uh, 10 million people are in an open jail and, and the world is going in circle. And, and basically we are all, you know, beating the bushes and uh, not, not getting to any any sort of resolve to this uh, dilemma. Well, I appreciate your, uh, uh, you know, services for the human rights and I hope to see you at Washington for raising the voice for them again. Thank you for giving us the time and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Kaza. Thank you, sir. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Bye-bye.